Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're safe and keeping healthy. In this episode of Vaccinate India, we will be speaking about vaccine hesitancy and why we shouldn't be wary of the vaccine. Questions like why the gap between the two doses of the vaccine is constantly changing, what that means for those who have already gotten their first shot and whether it's safe for pregnant women to get vaccinated. Yes, vaccine hesitancy is being experienced by governments everywhere and it's a problem. Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, chief scientist at the World Health Organization, has championed the cause of vaccination across the world. And she will be joining us to help us understand the source of this hesitancy, the history of it, and going forward, who are the best messengers to take the message of vaccination forward. So let's go and hear more from her. Hello and a warm welcome to the intersection, Dr. Swaminathan. Could you please introduce yourself? I'm uh, Dr. Samya Swaminathan. I'm the chief scientist at the World Health Organization. This is a position that was created two years ago. So I'm the first uh, occupant of this position. I understand that vaccine hesitancy is normal in all countries. And in the past, how have countries, or maybe especially India, gotten over it? What kind of messaging does it need? You know, vaccine hesitancy has been around for a long time. It's nothing new. You know, people don't understand always what vaccines are doing, why it's important, why do they or their child need to receive it, and also what the potential side effects are. A good example, I think, is from the polio program in India, where they found pockets where there was hesitancy. It was linked to cultural practices. In some cases, it was linked to religious beliefs and myths and misconceptions about uh, what the vaccine contained. And in other cases, I think it was just poor information. At that time, I think there were many innovative ways that were used. And one of them was to use actually the religious leaders. You have to convey messages through people who are trusted by the community. And you have to identify who these people are. In some cases, it's the local village head. In some cases, it's it's the spiritual or religious leader that you really believe. We can't just throw out messages without understanding uh, what people's genuine questions and doubts are. Those need to be addressed. I mean, I think it's been a long time since we have all realized that this kind of direct public announcement doesn't work. Um, All over India, we're seeing much higher demand for Covishield, which is the Oxford vaccine versus Covaxin, which is the Bharat biotech one. Is this a legitimate ask that I would prefer to have this one rather than that one? Both are good. Both are effective. Both are safe. And I would encourage people to take whichever vaccine they're able to get at the earliest possible time. When these vaccines were approved in India, we had the Covishield vaccine, which had data from clinical trials, mainly conducted outside India, but they had completed phase three trials. And then you had the Covaxin was still enrolling patients in uh, the phase three trial. There was very little data in the public domain about either the efficacy or the safety of the vaccine. And so a lot of uh, questions were raised. I think questions were, were quite justified, but that probably raised doubts in the minds of people who don't follow the science as closely. Since then, a lot more data has become available on the Covaxin, and it looks as though both the safety and efficacy are uh, perfectly good. And so at this point, you know, I would feel quite confident about uh, both of those vaccines that are available in India. We are going to see more vaccines uh, coming in as well. And again, uh, we need to look at each vaccine from the data that's available in the public domain. Uh, The doctor that I was speaking to said that there were a lot of people, paramedics he saw, were coming in from rural areas and they had a lot of questions again is this going to make me important infertile we can't get pregnant why is that the first line of attack when it comes to vaccines and i've seen this in a lot of conversations well you know one difference now is that this is an adult vaccine and adults in most countries are not used to vaccination childhood vaccines also have these kind of things associated with it these myths and rumors and misinformation campaigns And sometimes, you know, it's linked with uh, an adverse event that occurs. As you know, adverse events are very rare, but they can and do occur. That obviously creates a lot of fear in people's minds. And uh, again, it's up to the public health and medical communities to explain. And I always talk about benefits versus risks. So if you take a COVID vaccine, yes, there's a one in a million chance that you might get an anaphylactic, you know, allergic reaction. There's maybe two or three in a million chance 
that you may get some other rare side effect. On the other hand, if you get COVID, you know, there's a 10% chance that you will land up in the ICU and uh, a significant percentage uh, uh, proportion would, uh, would die, unfortunately, especially for an older person. So you have to always look at benefits versus risks when you're talking about vaccines. And, and so when you're launching an adult vaccination program, one needs to address all of these questions that people have. We don't know where they get these ideas from, uh, you know, about infertility. That's very common, you know, that was for polio. There are conspiracy yeah. theories floating around. There are uh, myths that you can't, women can't take it if they're menstruating. Now, the pregnancy question, that's a scientific question. So that's a very legitimate question. But many of these other questions are, uh, don't have any basis in science. So it's a question, again, of reassuring people, but then it's a question of trust. And they will get reassured if they hear it from somebody whom they trust. So what is the, uh, what is the current situation? Should pregnant women take the vaccine or not take the vaccine or wait and watch? It's now very clear that pregnant women who get COVID are at a higher risk of getting ill, of landing up in the ICU and of having premature birth and so on. And therefore, the safety of uh, some of these vaccines in pregnancy now has we've gathered experience over the last six months or so. Yeah. And there is nothing concerning that's been reported so far. So whilst it's something that we have to continue to watch, at this point, we would say, go ahead and take it for a pregnant woman if you're living in an area where there's a lot of transmission going on. As India has now increased the gap between the doses, and yes, UK announced that it has reduced the gap between the doses because of their fear that the Indian variant is now here and they quickly want to ramp up. Could you explain why do we have the gap and why is it malleable? If you keep changing the gap, what are the impacts of that? This is an evolving field and it's, the science is evolving. And so if we change our minds and if we change decisions, it's not because we don't know what we're doing, but it's because you're responding to the new data that's coming out. So I think we need to tell people that just because something gets changed doesn't mean we were wrong. It's just that we have new data. Now, in the case of the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine or the Covishield vaccine, different gaps were studied when they did the first clinical trial. What they observed was that the longer the gap between the two doses, the better the body's immune response. And based on that, the WHO made a recommendation to use the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine with a gap of 8 to 12 weeks. Different countries can use different durations based on the recommendations of their own expert advisories. And India then used a gap of, I understand it was 4 to 6 weeks, and then it was increased to 6 to 8 weeks. The latest is 12 to 16 weeks. The first dose gives you enough protection to protect you from getting severe disease, even if you get infection, and that the second dose given later would really boost that immunity to an even higher level. The experience from the UK has been that strategy has worked. We rapidly saw reductions in hospitalizations, in deaths, starting from the most elderly age group and then gradually coming down. But I think the science behind having the longer gap is still strong. So it doesn't mean that if the gap is longer, it's less effective? No. The only thing it does mean is that the first dose gives you, let's say, about 70% protection. And after the second dose, that may go to 85-90% protection. But models have shown that if you have a lot of infection going in the community and you have 70% protection amongst a larger population, that actually is more beneficial than having a smaller number of people with 85% protection. Uh, the CDC in the US just announced that if you have been fully vaccinated, you can take your masks off. And in the UK, we have been told that no, still have to keep your masks on. So what is correct? Because these are diametrically opposite. I would say that in most parts of the world, we're not in a state where we can take masks off, particularly indoors, because you still have a mixture of vaccinated and unvaccinated people. And we know that even if you're vaccinated, you can still get the infection. You, you may not get very sick but you could still have the infection and potentially you could be spreading it to others. Before we close, Dr. Swamathan, how long before India reaches herd immunity? I mean, do, you have, do we have any idea, some sense of normalcy because of how long do we have to wait? And I know it's a very difficult question, but do we have a ballpark? A lot depends on the speed of vaccination and that depends again on the supplies of vaccines. That's the constraint at the, at the moment. Once that is unlocked, and I think in the second half of the year, we're going to see much larger volumes of uh, vaccines available across the world and also in India. 
then India can scale up because I think India does have the capacity to vaccinate larger numbers of people. We're doing about 2 million a day now. I'm sure we could go to 5 to 7 million a day if the supplies were available. But then all said and done, India is a huge country, population of close to 1.4 billion, and it's not going to be easy to vaccinate a billion people with two doses of the vaccine. So I would say that it would take some time, certainly more than a year to do that, however fast we go. So till then, it's really going to be very important for us to implement and keep on doing all the other what we call non-pharmaceutical interventions in order to keep transmission low and, and deaths low. Thank you so much, Dr. Swaminathan. It was a delight to have you. Thanks, Padma. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, then please like, share and subscribe. We'll see you in the next episode of Vaccinate India. Until then, please take care and stay safe.